Touch of Class, written and directed by Micheli Swainston Harrison and Thomas Harris, produced for The Fundamentals, Episode 1, A Name. Ah, so, this is it, Roger? Yes, lovely. Are you sure this is the right spot? Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, 47 Gibson Avenue. Yes, this is the spot. But, Jeremy, we can't run our shop here. Have you seen the youths? Well, we have to. This is the only store Father has left us. Before he left us? Yes, he did, Roger. He has left us with nothing. But, like our forefathers, we will build something worth remembering. I tell you, from the ashes of abandonment, a great fire shall spread across London. But not the fire of London, because that was a disaster. And I am sure our fire won't be disastrous. Uh, Maybe fire was the wrong word to use, but I mean a metaphorical fire. Yes, metaphorical fire. Well, it doesn't matter. Because we will become successful, even if we have to use the credit card. Oh, Jeremy, you always know what to say. And I will face my fears and use that credit card. For you, Jeremy. For you. No, Roger. For us. Okay, um, Donna said she left the key under the doormat. So, let's get inside away from this (laughs) street noise and see what father has left us. Uh, Jeremy, did Donna say she was coming early today? Uh, no, um, she's due to arrive at one, but you know our Donna. She will arrive when she wants to. So she told you to back off, basically? Uh, uh, okay, um, she told me that we should get off our, and please do forgive my French, asses. (laughs) If we want to actually get on with our new lives. Um, such a coarse girl, father employed. Um, anyway, why do you ask? Ah, yes. Well, it appears that the door has been opened. And the key has... Possibly. Perhaps. Maybe. Definitely. Been taken. What? Yes, I, I'm afraid so. Oh, t- that must explain why that youth was running off with the 1893 German-made Linden cuckoo clock. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You see, I just thought that he had an exceptionally good taste in furniture and wanted to get it home before he was mugged. <laughs> uh, well, um, after you. Mm. Call Donna later and tell her to sort out some new locks. Y- yes, of course. Uh, don't want to risk any more looting now, do we? My own. Feast your eyes upon the family fortune. What, is it any good? Oh. Oh. Some old tables and a... And a grandfather clock. Well, there was also the um, cuckoo clock, but it was, you know, stolen. Um, Besides, they're not old, they are antiques. Uh, Yes, yes, antiques, of course, Uh, sorry. Right, Roger, hit the lights and let's get started. All right, here goes. Call Donna. (sighs) Call Donna. Right, so that's uh, three tables, one stool, two wooden chairs, and a... And a grandfather clock. (laughs) Oh, and the rat trap, of course. When father said he was struggling, I thought he meant the kind when one chokes on a bit of swan fat, then laughs it off. (laughs) Not the kind when one finds out the swan is not in fact theirs, but is the queen's, and that they have taken one too many swans for it to be overlooked this time. (laughs) Um, But... We made a promise to the family that we would fix this and restore our family name. Yes. Yes, we did. Hmm. When was the last time we had a swan? 
at Auntie Crystal's funeral, slash Cousin Bertie's birthday, slash father's disowning of the family name and the businesses when he decided to leave us all for Columbia. Ah, uh, yes. That was a real corker of a night, wasn't it? <laughs> we got so drunk that when Mummy tried setting us up with cousins Gertrude and Bertrude, we almost agreed... Shut <laughs> up, Roger! We never speak of that night! Sorry. Well, uh, while we wait for Donna, uh, and the locksmith, and, and the um, ele electrician, our first port of call must be a name for our soon-to-be-prosperous antique shop. How about... Something Latin. The punters love a Latin name. Do you speak any? Uh, of course not. Everyone knows that Latin is a written, not a spoken language. Oh, yes. Uh, then what do the Italians speak? Italian. OK. How about something Italian? Well, do you know any Italian? No, no Italian. But I, I think I can recall some French from Year 7. Oh, French is always interesting. What have you got? S'il te plaît... Je peux aller au toilet. Oh, oh, lovely. They do say French is the language of love. What does it mean? Please, can I go to the toilet? Oh, goodness sake, that is ridiculous. We can't name our shop that. There isn't even a toilet in here. True, there is only three tables and a clock. That's, that's it? How about something simple? Tables and clocks. Don't you mean tables and clocks? That's what I said. Uh, no, you said tables and clocks, and then I said tables and clock. Yes, tables and clocks. Glad to see we're on the same page. L listen, you don't get it. You said tables and clocks with an S, and then I said tables and clock without an S, because we only have one clock. One clock, table one. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yes, ah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, I see, very clever, Roger, always the joker of the family, yes, very good. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, but seriously, I, I do like tables and clocks, now we just need an, an adjective of sorts. Uh, how do you mean? A way of describing our tables and clocks. I've got it, antique tables and clocks, hmm? Perhaps, but don't you think that's a bit on the nose? We want something more mysterious, something customers will see from the street and feel compelled by to enter. Oh, very clever. I like it. I like it. How about rare tables and clocks? <laughs> yes, because we only have two tables and one clock. Very clever, Roger. Very funny. Joker. <laughs> uh, no, yes. that was a, uh, an actual name suggestion. Oh, um, okay, um, that's good. Uh, who am I kidding? This is hard. How about some music to help? Brilliant idea. Uh, how do we play the music? Isn't there a record player? Antique shops always have one of those. Or one of those big horn things that play the music from the box thing. Hmm, not this one. Besides, we don't have any records to play. Ah, yes. I could open the door and see if there is any street artist doing any music. Why not? This is London after all. Um, there wasn't any. Yes, I, uh, I gathered. Wow, I leave them to open the shop and they are here sleeping. Good afternoon! Goodness me! <laughs> oh, Donna! While you were so busy napping, I've been trying to fix this mess of yours. I have a locksmith coming tonight and an electrician due tomorrow. Ah, thank you. Um, about that. Do we get to use the credit card? That depends on how screwed this building really is. <gasps> Language! Oh, you mean screwed? Oh, you two oh. are such princesses. Now... If I was to say such princesses. Anyway, what valid excuse do you two have to be sleeping on the job? Well, uh, we were having a cleaning break. No, you weren't. 
we, we were cleaning our minds by mm, yes. uh, having a siesta, as the Spanish say. <laughs> okay. But what have you actually accomplished? Uh, um, we were trying to come up with a name for the shop. Which is a lot harder than it sounds. Mm. Uh, we have managed to settle on <clears throat> something, tables and clocks. That's a great name. Something, tables and clocks. Uh, no, 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 Donna, you don't get it. Um, it's something is the filler. Uh, we need a word before tables and clocks, so it'll go, mmm, tables and clocks. Yes, an, an adjective, uh, preferably in English. Mm-hmm. Why would we choose another language? Uh, we tried that route and it's a, a dead end. How about your surname? That's bound to go down a tree in this part of London. Donna, you are a genius. That is a brilliant idea. Hiring you was one of the f- things Father did right. This way, when eventually we go global and become the prosperous store we always knew we would be, we would have brought back honour to the family name. Father might even come back from Colombia. Uh, uh, no, I, I, I doubt that. Um, his new wife, I hear, is um, quite the looker. <clears throat> Don't say that. The truth can hurt, Roger. But anyway, forget him. We won't need him. We will be the new face of the family. The proud owners of... A noose, tables and clocks. <laughs> They'll definitely make a name for themselves. Hey guys, where did the cuckoo clock go? Uh, Jeremy lost it. Now, what do you mean I lost it? It was stolen, for goodness sake. Stolen? How? Well, well Donnie, you left the key under the doormat, so it was kind yeah, of... Yeah, if you your, showed your up in time. Yeah, yeah, right. We did show up in time. time. We yeah. were there hey, anyway, we, we saw the thief um, go with it. It was the thief uh, ran away with did, it. We did, we did. Why didn't you yeah. run after him? Well, because we didn't have the right uh, shoes uh, on. Yeah, it was very difficult. No, no, Donna, you should have come here. Well, we to know? You A Touch of Class, written and directed by Micheli Swainston Harrison and Thomas Harris. Jeremy, played by Thomas Harris. Roger, played by Micheli Swainston Harrison. Donna, played by Sharma Glocklin. <laughs>